Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to give you a quick introduction to algebra tiles and a very um, basic introduction to how to use them. So algebra tiles can look different. Um, mine look like this. I've got some that look like this. Green on one side and red on the other. They're long and skinny. And I have some other little ones that are kind of beige on one side and red on the other. Um, there are also other sizes of algebra tiles. One set might come with, I've got two different kinds here, um, but there could be maybe six-ish total uh, different shapes and sizes. Um, so I'm just going to introduce these two tiles here for now. Um, this is basically the same as a two-color counter, um, which you may have used for adding and subtracting integers. Um, mine is yellow and red. They can be, it doesn't matter what colors they are, as long as you can tell one side from the other. Um, and we'll use one color to represent positive things and one color to represent negative. So my, um, I always use red for negative. And other people might do the opposite, it doesn't really matter. Um, so this, for me, represents positive one. So that's plus one. And this guy here is negative one. Um, and then we've got this piece. Um, and you may have already seen this with two color counters, but you might be like, well, what's the deal with this? Um, one interesting thing to notice is that usually with the algebra tiles, again, this might depend on the company where yours came from or whether they're homemade or how they're, where they come from. Usually they make them so it's not exactly a whole number of times as long. Like this one is a little bit more than five times as long as one of the little guys. And that's intentional. Um, this does not represent five. Um, it represents a variable. So we call this one here a variable tile. Um, sometimes for short I call it an X tile, but it doesn't need to represent X. It could represent A or B or any other variable. Um, so we use this to represent either a quantity that we don't know how big it is and we're trying to find out, or a quantity that could have take on different values at different times. And again, um, this one will represent positive x, or just x often we'll say, and if I flip it over to the green, the red side, this is negative x. Uh, so the important thing is that with the colors that you know which side is positive and negative um, and that the people reading your work know which side is positive and negative. So I'm going to show you a quick example of um, how we can use algebra tiles to represent an expression. Um, so for example, if we wanted to represent 2x plus 3, we just get out two x tiles. Make sure they're both positive. And then we'll get it plus three. There. That's two x plus three. Now, with equations, I'm going to show you um, two options. So I'll separate right down the middle here. And let's look at the equation We'll say 2x plus 3 equals 5. So an equation, I remind you, is um, two expressions that are set equal to each other. That means that they're the same. They have the same value. Um, and it could have one or more variables in it. In this video, we're only going to look at um, an equation with one variable in it. Um, and there could be variables on either side. That doesn't matter at all. So the important thing when we represent equations with our algebra tiles is that we keep real good track of where this equal sign is because we really have two separate things that have the same value as each other. And lots of times with equations, we're going to try to find the value of the variable, the missing value here for our x value. Um, and so it's really important that we know what is equal to what, that we know which um, part is on which side. So sometimes people might start off 
And then, so there's just, so 2x plus 3, and the 5, um, which is a perfectly good way to start. Um, but I think we need to write something else in there so that we really know, for example, that, so we don't let that slide over there um, and get mixed up. So um, a really simple way to do it is just draw a line down your page. And this line represents the equal sign, or it tells us that the two sides are, have the same value as each other. Um, recently I started doing another way, um, which... I think I sort of combined ideas from a couple of things to come up with, and I'm sure other people have also had the same idea. Uh, what I've started doing recently is drawing a little balance scale. Now, I'm terrible at drawing, so it's not a work of art. I do two things like this, and then I do a little bit in the middle, and kind of like that. Um, and I like to draw this. First of all, it still keeps my things separate, as long as I don't let them kind of get messy over into the middle. Um, but I like to draw it like that because it reminds me uh, of the meaning of the equal signs, which is that the two quantities, this one in this side of the scale and this one, have the same value, so that they're like balanced on the scale. So if I was going to do it like that, I'd show my 2x plus 3 and make sure it's tucked up on that side of the little scale. And I'll just pull out some extra unit tiles over here. Show that they, that is equal to... Um, and so the really important thing is just that you keep in your equations, you keep each side separated from each other. You can either uh, even just put some object down in the middle of your workspace, like a ruler or something. Um, just don't use the pencil you're writing it with, because when you pick it up to write, um, then you'll lose your equal sign. So make it something that won't disappear in the middle of your work. All right, so again, these are variable tiles, um, or maybe x tiles for short, or it could be any variable. And these are unit tiles, which represent positive one and negative one. All right, good luck with algebra tiles.